hey, remote learning is coming and we're gonna have to make some changes with the way that we do things. Um, you might have some worksheets or some handouts that you normally distribute to the students that they would write on. So what can we do? How can we make those more interactive? So uh, there's a way to do that and you can use the Google Suite for that. You can take worksheets that you already have or you can take ones that you're going to create and you can make it a little bit more interactive. So imagine that you have just a standard worksheet like this one right over here. And now you make it so that you have the ability to type the answers right in. Uh, and the other nice thing I'm going to show you is that the students won't be able to manipulate the questions. The only thing that they can do is type in their answers. Or you might have a worksheet, something like this one, where there's different categories and they have to take the words in the word bank and put it into those different categories. So I can show you a way to take something like this and then make it into a drag and drop scenario. Uh, all of these worksheets that I'm going to show you, the interactive ones, you can then upload to Google Classroom and your students will very easily be able to use them. So let's say this is one of the worksheets that you want to make interactive. Uh, this is one that I've created in the past, but you can pick anything that you, that you have available. Um, you want to make sure that the worksheet is in PDF format because what we need to do is we need to turn this into an image. Now you can certainly take a screenshot of this and you can do that on a PC or a Mac. Um, however, if you do have it in a PDF format, there's a better way. Because if you do take a screenshot of this, you have to get the whole thing into the image and the size is kind of small and the resolution becomes poor once you end up making it bigger for the interactive worksheet. But what we can do is we can go to uh, this website here, which is uh, pdftoimage.com. And there's actually a number of different functions that this website can do if you click on these different tabs over here. And what we can do is we can take a PDF document and we can change it to a JPEG, an image file. And the quality is much better this way. And it's very simple to do. Uh, you have a place to drop your files. And so if we, we take that worksheet right there and we just drop it in, it converts it to um, a file puts into a zip you click download and you will find that in your download uh, folder now once you have that image we need to go to our Google Drive and we need a new Google slide right this won't currently work with docs or sheets but it will work with slides so we'll just open up a new presentation and once this uh, opens up we don't need the themes so we can get rid of that and we don't need a title so we'll click on that box, we'll get rid of it. We'll also click on the subtitle, we'll get rid of that one. Now that other worksheet that we had, this one right here, this is just a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And so what I'm gonna do, this first thing that we do is we go to file and we go down to the page setup way down at the bottom and we choose custom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the format, right? The way that this, the screen is set up and we're gonna make it a standard piece of paper, eight and a half by 11 inches. And then voila, there it is. So this looks just like a regular piece of paper. And what we'll do now is we have an image for our worksheet and we're gonna make that as the background. So we'll click on this background button here and then we choose the image and you've got all kinds of options as to how you get the image uploaded to the, uh, to the file. But I know that it's right here. I've got this one ready to go. We'll just drag it in. And once it uploads, we hit done. There it is. Now our Google slide has the background, which matches exactly what our uh, worksheet is. And if you did a screenshot of this, which you can certainly do, when you zoom in, you sometimes get it to be a little bit blurry. But you can see here, it's actually quite clear. It's fine like this. So uh, to make this interactive, the next thing what we wanna do is we wanna add in uh, text boxes here. So we'll just go to our text box and we'll just drag one in right where we want the answers to go. And then we can just type in, I'm gonna type in type uh, name here. Now, if you look, it's a little bit wonky, like it's, why is it off like that? Well, we can fix that. If we click on the text box and we can either do a right click or you can go into the uh, menu at the top, we wanna to go to the format options. And then where it says text fitting over here, it has like this little padding. We wanna change the top and the bottom to zero. So by default, it'll come up as 0.1. And then that'll put it right in the middle. Uh, the other thing that I like to do for this is I like to, uh, I'll make it a little bit smaller so it seems to fit with um, the size of the font that's already here. 
Uh, but I also like to change the color of it just to make it easier to see. So in this case, we'll make it uh, blue and we can change the height of the text box and we can drag it down and you can be really precise if you'd like to make it go right in. And so now the, uh, the students know where to type their name. So in, in this particular one, there's a number of places where they're supposed to type answers. And the nice thing is that once you have the format that you like for the way the text box is, all we have to do is click on the text box, copy it, and then paste it. And then you take the new one and you drag it down to where you want it to fit. We can resize it. And then maybe I'll copy this one, paste a new one, put it to the next question. And it actually doesn't take that long to do. And here we've got an open response one, so we'll just paste another one. We'll drag it down like this. And we can make it bigger like that. Now, I do have type name here, so maybe we'll get rid of the name part because we don't want the name everywhere. And we'll just put type here, or you can put type answer here. You can make it however you like. Um, and when you're done, you get a worksheet that kind of looks like this. So uh, it didn't take that long to do. And so now the students can go and they can type their answer in, but the questions are part of the background, so they can't grab or type over or delete any of the questions. Perfect. Now, the other worksheet that uh, I want to show you is something like this that has a word bank. So for the word bank one, uh, and this particular one is about forces and Newton's laws, but again, you can pick whatever fits uh, your classes. Um, normally, if I would give this to them in class, they can you know, work by themselves, pairs, groups, right? That's completely up to you. Um, and then they would just take the list of words here and they would just handwrite them. Uh, this last column here, they make up their own category. So I want to make this interactive where it's more of a drag and drop. And we'll basically go through and do the same thing, same procedure. Uh, I do change the format of this slightly. So here it says the word place. And then I'm going to make the word bank just a little bit bigger. So I would open up my uh, Word document or Google Doc or however you have this, make a few edits, change it as a PDF so that it looks like this. Notice now I have the word drag over here and the word bank is a little bit bigger. And then we would go back to our website, the PDF um, to image.com. We'll get rid of this one and we could drag that vocab worksheet that we have and we would repeat exactly the same process, right? This will go into your download folder and then it'll save it as an image. And what we'll do is we'll repeat the process one more time. So we'll go new and a new Google slide. And we'll wait for the themes to open up on the side over here. We don't need the themes, get rid of that. We'll get rid of the title, we'll get rid of the subtitle. Now I know that that other worksheet was also eight and a half by 11. So we'll go down to file, page setup at the very bottom, custom. And we'll change this to eight and a half by 11 inches. And then we'll resize the slide so it will fit. And just like with the other one, we'll go and we'll make the background match up with the new photo of the worksheet that we have. And so this one, is here, we'll drag this one in, let it upload, and then we'll hit done. And just like the other one, let me just zoom in a little bit here. They can't make any changes to this. Now, you can put in another text box like this, just like we did before, and you can put in type your name or type name here. And remember, this is kind of a little bit strange because the way that it does that padding. So if we right click, we'll go to the options, text fitting, and we'll change the padding on the top and the bottom to zero. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so it fits. And I like to make a different color from the worksheet so it's easy to see their answers. And again, you can go through and do the rest of that here. Now, for the word bank part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a shape. And you can pick whatever shape that you want, but just to make this one a little bit simpler, I'm just going to make it a rectangle. So I'm going to draw out a shape like this, and this is going to be the part where they can drag and drop uh, their answers. Now, if we take a look at that worksheet, this one, we've got action, reaction, pair. So that's what I want to put in this first one. So if I just 
double click here, I can write in action, reaction, pair. Now for me, that's a little bit big, so we'll make it smaller. And because this is a, a virtual or electronic document, you don't have to worry about printing colors or anything black and white. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this um, match with our school color. So we've got blue and gold. I'm gonna make the font yellow, and then I'll make the background of this blue. So this now they can take and they can drag it around and they can put it wherever they like. Uh, make sure if you do have a column that it actually fits and you can see this one does. So here's a trick. So for this particular one, they can use the words more than once. They can put them into the different categories as long as they can tell me why they put it into that category. So what you can do is when we click on this, we can copy it and paste it. And what we'll do is we'll stack them right on top of each other. Now in this case, there's one, two, three, four different categories. So I'm gonna make five copies stacked, just in case they make a mistake on there. And if you stack them up like this, exactly, it looks like there's only one. So then if they go and they take and they drag this over here, they're still up here, right? There's still one available. Oh look, I can actually put it in the other columns. And you're gonna just blow their mind because they're gonna be like, how did they get that drag and drag. how is it here still, even though I've dragged it down here? So what was the other uh, word? We've got coefficient of friction was another one. So I'm gonna paste the new one, but I'll bring it up next to it because this is another word. I'll click and I'll write coefficient of friction. And I can repeat this process again. So now I'll take this one copy that one, paste it, and then I can keep stacking them on top of one another. Uh, down here, don't forget, there's a place for them to write in their answer. So I'll take this, I'll copy that text box, and I'll paste the text box, and drag it down like this, and I can resize it so it fits, or maybe for this one, so it fits the same format as the others. I'm just doing this kind of quickly. You can put type here. And we can make it so that this one is centered. And you can even change so that it's aligned. Um, that's not the right one. You can make it so it's aligned uh, vertically as well. So um, when you're done, you'll have something that looks like this. So. We'll just zoom in just a little bit. And what the students can do now is they can type their name in, right? And they can take these and they can drag them around and they still have options up there. So there you have it. Uh, I hope that is something that you can use in some of your classes. So there you have it. Uh, I hope that that was useful for you and that you might be able to find some ways that you can take uh, existing materials or new materials and you can make it a little bit more interactive when the students uh, possibly are learning remotely. Even after everything that's going on, this still might be another option that you can use uh, to make uh, your classes a little bit more interactive uh, virtually. Thanks for watching.